Good day. In this video, I'm going to show you a has text property that I wrote for the WinForms text box. It comes in handy for all you WinForms developers out there because it'll take a bit of complexity out of the main form or your form or wherever you're going to put this logic that you know checks to see if the text box has text. So currently, if you want to check to see if the text box has text, you have to compare the text property to string.empty or you have to check the text length property for zero. And I found it a bit uh, inexpressive, so I decided to write the has text property for a lot of my projects. And uh, it, it, is, uh, it is very helpful to an extent. And uh, I suggest using it, uh, well, I often use it where you have a submit button and an input box and you would disable and enable these, the submit button according to whether or not there's input. Uh, it does reduce the complexity of the code in a way that you don't have to check to see if there's this text in the in the box and then if there isn't you show a message box. It's, it's like one line basically if you're using data bindings and uh, it uh, definitely helps out. A lot of people are against doing this in any way like they just don't like disabling things because they're afraid that the user is not going to know what's going on but when it comes to simple things like this where you, you have input and then a submit button it doesn't matter the user is going to know it's actually quite intuitive dialogues um, some people use dialogues excessively and they're obnoxious uh, it's really just a matter of choosing when when is the correct time to use dialogues and when isn't so anyways, I often do this. It's okay. It doesn't really matter as long as you do it right. All right, so let's take a look at the implementation for this thing here. It's just a data binding. I'm just adding a data binding to button one. And it's just uh, going to bind to extended text box one, the has text property. So let's take a look at it. It's very simple. I'm implementing I notify property changed, of course, for the data bindings. And this is the implementation. You have the uh, event here. And then you have the event method to raise the event. I'm passing in a property name. I'm going to create the args from the property name and then raise the event. All right, and here's the has text property. It's very simple. Uh, you don't have to do much with this. You just uh, return text length is greater than zero. And uh, it's a read-only property. It's not a two-way binding. Well, it's not something that you can do a two-way binding with, of course, because that wouldn't, that wouldn't make any sense. And um, here's just how I'm updating it. So you got the uh, on text changed. It's just going to raise on property changed has text. So a simple test to make sure that this works correctly is to um, change the text property in the designer view. So we want the button to be disabled. Yeah, so it is disabled. And that's all. See you later.